Hey guys, Aton, and welcome to my new show, Extreme Kitchens. Today, I'm in the kitchen with Impossible Foods using their Impossible Burger, and we are making nachos in my school. All right, let's get cooking. So we're gonna start by making a chorizo crumble using the Impossible Foods meat. Now, you guys know I absolutely love this. If you follow me anywhere, I'm constantly talking about it. I love them, I reach out to them, I love the people there, and I'm like, we have to work together. So I partner with them for this video, and let's start to start making it. All right, let's go. Over here, I have on my stovetop a pan that is now heating, and I'm gonna start by just adding in some vegetable oil and get that nice and hot. All right, now I'm adding in my onions into here and let's just now saute them with our garlic also straight into there until they are nice and translucent. Then we're gonna add in the rest of our ingredients. All right, here we go. Our onions are getting nice and cooked and I'm the only one, it's just me, I'm kind of freaking out that I'm literally cooking in my school. This was the best idea ever. Okay, so I can take my Impossible Foods packet over here and what I really love about the Impossible um, Bull Foods meat, the taste and texture of this is just like regular ground beef, except it is made 100% from plants. All right, I mean, look at that. Does that not look like ground beef? Straight into here, we're gonna add the whole packet in. And like I said, it literally looks, smells, tastes, and cooks like regular ground beef. So I'm just gonna break it up as if I was cooking regular meat. Impossible Burger is available in more than 17,000 restaurants across the US, but now it's also available in select grocery stores so you can cook it at home. Right now you can find it at Wegmans and Fairway on the East Coast and in Gelson's in Southern California. All right, I just need to come closer to smell this. It smells incredible. I don't think my school has ever smelled this good. Um, this is so cool. All right, so my meat is now nice and cooked and to that I'm gonna add in some paprika, cumin, chili powder, a little bit of oregano, some freshly cracked pepper, and a nice sprinkle of salt. Some chipotles in adobo, where I just took out the chipotle chili and diced it up. Let's add that into here. All right, now this has been nice and mixed. I'm gonna add in just a touch of water to kind of turn those spices into a sauce, and then cook that for a few minutes until it comes together and kind of dries back up. All right, so our meat is now done. And look at that, look at that beautiful chorizo crumble we just made. All right, now I'm gonna grab right over here, I have a little sheet pan, and in my sheet pan, I have a bunch of homemade chips. Now, if you wanna make homemade chips, you totally can, just fry them in 350 degrees oil, cut up some tortillas, but you can totally use store-bought. I just like to be a little bougie. All right, so we're gonna take these here, and I actually like to take some out, you'll see. Watch this out, we're gonna take some out, place those down there, and now over here, I have two different types of cheeses. I have some cheddar cheese and some mozzarella cheese. You can really use any type of melty cheese that you like. And let's generously sprinkle them. By generously, I mean like put like too much cheese because there is no such thing. Now let's add in the impossible chorizo. Load it all over with that. There's literally like no such thing as too much of this on here. Now, you see how we left these chips over here? We're now gonna take them, place them on top, cause we want layers, you know, and place those on top, and then do what we just did all over again. And now over here behind me, oh, look at that. I just so happen to have an oven that is now preheated to a nice broil setting. I'm gonna pop this into here and broil it for about four to five minutes, depending on your oven, until all the cheese is nice and melted. All right, now let's make some guacamole to put on top. Now, oh, Aton, why don't you go grab it from the cabinet? Oh wait, I'm just using the little seat over here for the desk and we're gonna make guacamole. Let me show you. All right, we have over here five different avocados because actually you need four, but I always like to have one extra in case they're not good. So I'm just gonna cut these open, place them in here, and then we're gonna mash them with a whisk. All right, now you guys know my little trick for making guacamole. You take your whisk and use it to mash it to get the perfect consistency. and add it into there, along with half an onion, diced, a little bit of jalapeno for some spice, but obviously you can always adjust to whatever your spice level is. Also gonna add in a little bit of chopped cilantro. Now cilantro is one of these things, you either hate it or you love it. I love it, my family hates it. Right now it's just me, so I'm gonna put in a good amount of cilantro into here. All right, all of that into there. Now I'm gonna add in my little tricks to add a little bit of lemon juice and a little bit of, well, a little bit of lemon juice and a little bit of lime. Almost got them confused there for a second. Whoop, that just fell on my lap, all good. I add half the juice of both. I think the combination just really takes it to a whole other level. It's a little trick that I learned recently. 
So let's just now squeeze in our lemon juice as well. Finally, a little bit of freshly caught pepper and some salt, pretty generous amount of salt in there, and just mix that together until fully combined. All right, I now have oven mitts on my hands because it is now time to take our nachos out of the oven. Oh my gosh, look at how cheesy and delicious that is. Okay. All right, it is now time to top it with little dollops of everything we just made. So we're gonna take some guacamole, put some dollops of that all over and kind of have fun with it. You know, it doesn't need to look perfect. I mean, it looks perfect because it's nachos, but you get what I'm saying. Now let's also top it with some sour cream. Now we have some homemade pico de gallo over here. As always with everything else, the recipe for it is linked down below. All right, now a little secret ingredient for your nachos. I have some pickled jalapenos. They are not as spicy as regular jalapenos, but they give you a nice like briny spicy flavor on top. But if you don't like spicy, you can obviously leave them out. And there you go. That is how you make some delicious impossible chorizo nachos in the middle of school. I mean, guys, if I can make this in my school, you can make it at home, literally no matter how crazy your kitchen is. Okay, I am done talking. It is now time to dig in. Now, I need to find a piece that is fully cheesy, fully coated with that chorizo. Okay, let's try to find a strategic piece. Oh, here we go. Let's try to get all that stuff on there. We need a really good chip. Okay, that looks like, oh, look at that. Look at that cheese bowl. Look at that cheese bowl. We got the cheese on there. We have the pico on there. We have the homemade guac. We have everything. All right, let's just dig in. Can I do this in one bite? We shall see. Oh my God. These nachos are seriously incredible. Not only do you have that gooey, stringy cheese on top of the chips, that impossible chorizo is just out of this world. What I really love about Impossible Foods is they make meat replacements that don't make you miss the real thing. You do not need the beef. There's no compromise when you're doing this. You have the meatiness, the fattiness, the chew, the taste, the feel of real ground beef, but using Impossible meat, that's 100% plant-based. This is just absolutely incredible. Like I could literally sit here and eat this all day. Like I might just do that. This concludes this episode of Extreme Kitchens. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and huge shout out to my partner, Impossible Foods for helping me make this video. It is just so delicious. If you guys want the recipe and make this at your home or in your school, if you really want, the link to the recipe will be down below. And if you haven't already, be sure to click that big red subscribe button. It's big, it's red, it's down there. And be the first to know when I post new videos of this series from January to February, every single Monday. And comment down below, where is the strangest place you've ever cooked? I would love to hear. All right, I think I'm just gonna go devour the rest of these nachos. And I think I have class starting soon. So I'm gonna go ahead there with my nachos. All right, thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>